Welcome or welcome back to Better Preparedness. Thanks for joining in. Now 2019 has been a really strange year when it comes to wilderness searches. And I have a background as a former first responder. I work in emergency management. I kind of look at things a bit differently. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through sort of my observations of two extremely different searches for people in the wilderness here in Canada. One to do with lost, honest, really good campers. And the other thing to do with, well, Accused killers. Who are the two pairs of Canadians who you know, were being sought uh, in 2019 in particular? Well, on one hand, there were two teenagers who, traveling, ended up somehow being accused of three murders. Very gruesome, awful story. And it's also kind of gripped the, the country here in Canada because it's unresolved right now. The second one, are two women campers who got separated from their group and were in, they were in Algonquin Park in central Ontario, a very, very big provincial park and very unforgiving as well. So not an easy environment you know, to be found if you get separated from your group. In terms of the accused killers, well, the search is involving police and to a degree military. It's, these are not people trying to be found. These are people who have been evading. It's been a couple of weeks now of trying to evade authorities since it was determined that this is who they are. These people have been on the run. So on one hand, you've got police and to, to a degree military assisting because it's a very dangerous scenario. These people have killed, they're armed, and they're dangerous. At least that's what the, how the, the law enforcement is treating it. On the other hand, you had police and search and rescue volunteers and search and rescue experts and aircraft. But these were for people trying to be found. So the two young women in Algonquin Park they're trying to be found. People are trying to find them if they come fairly close and call out names and hear whistles or dogs. There's a good chance the two will try to find each other. Whereas the other ones, they're not trying to be found right now. Now finding people. If you're trying to find people who are evading you and you're in the second biggest country in the world, uh, there's a, there's a term called finding a needle in a haystack where you're trying to find a needle. You've got a big stack of hay and that's what you're trying to find. Well, in the case of the accused, they are, that's like a moving needle and they're changing haystacks. So right now, unless there are more leads that come up, that haystack keeps moving, the needle keeps moving, very hard to find. The other case for the two women, they were actively trying to be found and they did really what's right. They stayed put eventually where they were and that's how they were found. In terms of the community around them, well, regarding the accused, that's, that's terrifying for the communities that these two have traveled through or could possibly travel to or have traveled to. And when you think of the fact that they went from northern British Columbia across Alberta, across Saskatchewan, and across Manitoba, and at this point, uh, hopefully this is resolved, but at this point, all those communities have had a degree of, of trauma and, and fear associated with this incident. Whereas, in the case of the Algonquin Park, uh, two women who went missing, the community is behind that. It's they're involved. People are putting in volunteer time, and that's a that's a huge type of difference because one side is really actively helping, and that helps also you know, be less traumatic once these people are found. Hooray! And hopefully you move on as a community. But it's when you have accused killers on the loose, that's pretty daunting. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder or critical incident stress. If you take the two women who were in Algonquin Park, the search and rescue volunteers, the wildlife authorities, there's a, yes, they're searching, but they're not fearing their life. They're looking for people who want to be found. And then it's at the end, hopefully there's a good news story. Uh, or at the worst, I guess, you find the remains or and you find closure as to the, the people who went missing. And in terms of the accused killers, you've got people who've been searching a lot of the northern, you know, sort of prairie western provinces of Canada, and they've been searching, searching, searching for people who could be out there potentially to kill them uh, if they felt cornered and didn't want to give up or, or what have you. So you're looking for people who are try actively trying to hide from you. And that's scary. That's a bit of a combat experience. And you're going to have a mixture of people who have experience in that, a mixture of ex people who, don't, who aren't able to deal with that. 
and process it. So for me, one of my concerns in the terms of the search for these two accused is the long-term critical incident stress, the PTSD that will impact not only the people who are actively trying to catch them, but also the communities around who are fearful. You have to understand the way it is in a lot of rural Canada, especially in the north, people help each other. And if you see someone in distress, you help them. And in some ways, people help them, but fortunately, you know, their lives were, were not harmed by helping these two as they were fleeing. But you have a lot of communities that could suffer a lot of psychological trauma from this incident. The time frame, well, in terms of the two women uh, in Algonquin Park, the time frame was getting to them while they were still that while they were still alive, not knowing did they have water, did they have water filtration? I'll put a link to filtration. Um, did they have food? Did they have shelter? Things to help them keep keep alive for a longer period. Whereas the time frame for people who are evading, when you're dealing with a massive, massive country and wilderness, who knows what the time frame is? It's now been, I'll, I'll put it so far as to where it is right now, I think it's been two weeks, it, it's, it's gripped the, the nation because it's unresolved and people are quite fearful. And you, know, you may come across these people and have harm do you, done to you at you know, the sort of uh, least op expected moment. The lessons learned, well, for the two hikers and campers in Algonquin Park, the lessons learned were, it was sort of textbook, these people, the hikers did everything possible, really, it seems, to, to have helped their situation. And the searchers did really well. They helped find them. I think it was a tracking dog who eventually helped find them. That was sort of the lessons, one of these lessons learned will be, yes, great, we did it. We, we, we searched for them, we found them, fantastic. The lessons learned for this sort of manhunt, so to say, of these two accused is gonna be massive. You know, time was of the essence. Uh, just to find out who are these people and, and actually put a link together as to who who you suspect actually had committed these three uh, deaths and, and murders. The, the list of lessons learned is going to be huge and partially because it's just been such a difficult case for authorities and they're in motion and who knows what it's going to be uh, long term wise. Well. I hope this is useful. I hope it helps you understand a bit of the difference between a situation in the searching of the wilderness for, say, people who want to be found and people who don't want to be found. And hopefully there's a best as possible resolution to the two accused who are still on the run and who knows where in Northern Canada. Well, thanks for watching Better Preparedness. Click that subscribe button, click that like button, help, um, help grow the channel. And if you like more of that, well, you know, put it in the comments below that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching Better Preparedness.